Hello Sports Recap fam, I'm here to talk about the NBA Finals so far. In case I haven't noticed, Miami beat OKC for the third straight time to take a 3-1 lead. Um, yeah, history says this one's over. And I think reality's setting in for a lot of people that LeBron and Wade and them are going to get that, get that ring this year. It's really setting in. Um, let's talk about LeBron James real quick. LeBron James has been the one constant in this series. Let's read the stats from these games. Game 1, 30 points, 9 rebounds. Game 2, 32 points, 8 rebounds. Game 3, 29 points, 14 rebounds. In the ga game last night, 26 points, 9 rebounds, and 12 assists. LeBron has had a great series. And unlike other series that I've seen him in, he's definitely had many clutch moments. I'm not gonna call him I'm not gonna sit here and call him clutch. I don't I haven't seen he hasn't made the clutch shot like anything like that. But again, he did he doesn't have to. Because his team has done a great job building the lead and he's just making the plays necessary to keep that lead there. So he's having clutch series. He had a free throw that made it two possessions the other night and he shot two free throws and um OKC to clinch game two pretty much. So, he's doing exactly what he needs to do. He is the MVP of the final so far. And should this, the way this series is ending or going out, LeBron James will be the MVP. Like, we'll, we'll need the Thunder going seven games, which has not happened in this format. Um, next, let's talk about Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant, he has been Jekyll and Hyde. Like his his stats haven't changed a lot between away games and home games, but they're enough where you see a clear difference. Um, games one and two in OKC, Kevin Durant has averaged thirty four points. Games three and four in Miami, Kevin Durant has averaged twenty six point five points. Um, the thing here to me was. What really got Kevin Durant was probably the energy he had to put in on defense and what he had to wind up playing with. In games two and three, Kevin Durant had ten personal fouls. He had to worry about fouling out, and he couldn't really play his game because LeBron could easily probably do something, and he'll get foul number six. So he had to worry about that. Um... When he does defend LeBron, LeBron takes advantage of it. LeBron's shooting an absurd percentage when he's guarded by Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant has length, but Kevin Durant doesn't have the, um, the bulk to deal with LeBron should LeBron choose to post him up. And that's what LeBron wants to do a lot of. He's not, he has not done what he did in Game 6 in Boston, so he's been going to the hoop any sort of way. And I hate to say it, LeBron is getting the benefit of the doubt. If there's any kind of contact... And the ranks in the vicinity, they're going to the well, the referees have blew it this entire series. Now I'm not that's not the reason Miami's up three one. It's just no it's noted. It's noted. So Kevin Durant just had Scott Brooks made a great move by taking Kevin Durant off of LeBron James, at least for the first three quarters last night, and having him devote to somebody else who's not going to be flying into the lane nearly as much as LeBron. That worked a whole lot better, but the problem with Kevin Durant in these last two games have been his fourth quarter stats. Um, games one and two, he averaged 16.5 points in the fourth quarter. Um, game three, I think he only had two points, shake me on that, and I know last night he only had six in the fourth quarter. So that's not going to cut it. That's not going to cut it. Um, he's going to have to show up. And his, he's not bringing his show on the road. If he's going to have to bring his show on the road tomorrow night, if the Thunder have want any chance of winning this, of course every game from here on out is the Thunder must win, must win, must win. But if they take one in Miami, we're just back for to a three-two deficit with two games in OKC, and you know about that crowd. So I'm just saying. Um, the story with Russell Rushbrook has always been about his field goal attempt because he shoots so much and he doesn't seem to be efficient. 
with exception of last night. Let's look at the stats. Game one, 24 shots, 27 points. Game two, 26 shots, 27 points. Game three, 18 shots, 19 points. Game four, 32 shots, 43 points. The thing is, Russell Westbrook said, I think between this game, between games two and three, he's going to continue playing his game, whatever that is. And I'm thinking, because you already know I'm a Spurs fan, Russell Westbrook's game didn't really take didn't really take the thunder over the Spurs. Russell Westbrook tried to play more like a point guard, dishing it out because the first shot was never good enough to beat the Spurs. It was the first pass, the second pass, the third pass. That's how you beat the Spurs with teamwork. And all of a sudden, Russell Brooks going up, going down the court and just spotting up like crazy. And if those go in, great. Like last night, he put the thunder on his back. 43 points. But when those are not going in, which is more often the case than not, it's a, he's a detriment because he's not efficient and those missed shots seem to go to for transition layups on the other end because these are jump shots so they have long rebounds and a better chance for getting up transition points on the other end. Um, yeah, yesterday to me was a more of a blip, not a trend. Russell Westbrook, just, he needs to do a better job of looking out for his teammates. Now, if his jump shot's on tomorrow night like it, did, like it was last night, power to him. But if it's not, he needs to look at Kevin Durant and James Harden, Ibaka, just get his teammates into the game, too. Because it's going to take a team effort to win three straight games against Miami, let me tell you. Um, Alright, let's talk about the um, finals as a whole. The Heat... They have a formula. They have a formula. It's working. They know how they're going to get this ring. Their constant this entire series has been LeBron James. And their other players are chipping in enough to the point where they're winning these games. Dwayne Wade comes in and makes his acrobatic four-quarter shots. Um, Shane Battier hitting ridiculous from threes in the first quarters. Um, Norris Cole keen that 15-0 run and eventually 30-16 run. Last night, um, Mario Chalmers actually making some layups, some clutch layups down the stretch to maintain Miami's lead. I was very amazed at him. The Heat got a formula. They, they, they got what it takes to get this ring. Now, OKC, on the other hand, their formula's falling apart because we knew from the, from the get-go OKC lived by a jump shot, died by the jump shot, and right now they're dying by the jump shot because they're not making the jump shot. And what annoys the heck out of me is that in the Western Conference Finals, they couldn't miss. Games 3 through 6 in the Western Conference Finals, they made everything. They made contested jump shots, they made open jump shots. Finals, these last few games, they came and made the open ones. James Harden takes his sweet little time, and that ball still bangs the rim and flies out for a Miami rebound. It, it really makes me angry. That I don't understand that. But, um, that's what happens. Also, I think OKC is probably victim of the moment. The Spurs would not have let this happen, a 3-1 deficit, because the Spurs would know what to do in the fourth quarter. And their plan would have worked against Miami while it didn't against OKC. Because Miami, unlike OKC, is not a jump shot team. They are we're going to fly through the hoop any sort of way. And if the Spurs took that away, I don't think Miami would have had enough. I'll tell you the truth, Spurs would have won the first two games, and they wouldn't have fallen down to these deficits like OKC has. All right, let's get back to the, um, the teams at hand. Um, now, his, the history says that this series is over, but personally, I think all OKC has to do is win game five. Of course, they have to, like I said, they have to win every game from here on out, because if they lose another game, they're done. But remember, this is the 2-3-2 three, two, three, two format. Game 6 and 7, if necessary, are in OKC. All OKC needs to do is win Game 5, and that's a 3-2 deficit going to OKC, where if they go off to some strong starts or solid starts, their crowd can give them the energy to get over the top and win get those games in OKC. Believe that in Game 2, the only reason Miami won that was because of 
They started out 18 and 2 and never looked back. They held on. So, okay, while history says this series is well over, I think OKC has a shot if they win Game Five. How they're going to win Game Five, or if they can win Game Five, is a mystery to me. But if it gets back to OKC, you can bet that OKC will be coming out swinging. So, that's all I have to say about these NBA Finals. Um, I'll see y'all later, Sports Recap fan.